In lecture 13, we're going to uh, embark on a, a, a fun little adventure, in my opinion, of using what we know about trig functions, and maybe a little bit more that we'll teach you in this section, um, to recreate or model real world phenomena uh, using those trig functions. That is, if we have data that occurs in a periodic fashion, and one of the best examples is things like average temperature, um, which oscillates over the course of a year because during the summer it's warmer, during the winter it's cooler. If you look at average temperatures over a long period of time, you see that it oscillates back and forth. Of course, there are times when it's more extreme than others, but when you're talking about just general patterns of weather, not those extreme conditions, you see a very wave-like function occur. And since we've now explored trig functions like sine and cosine, which behave in a wave-like fashion, we're going to be able to recreate that data. That is, we're going to try to find a function that fits that data as best as possible with the given mathematical tools that we have. To do that, we need to actually add a couple of more parameters to our functions. Um, we've looked at so far y is equal to a sine of omega x and similarly cosine. Uh, we're going to call this sinusoidal curve fitting because those types of functions that produce a wave, the sine and cosine, uh, which is basically the same wave only shifted, is called a sinusoidal wave. Okay, those sinusoidal curves or sinusoidal waves are the tool we're going to use to model this periodic oscillating type data. To do more powerful fitting, we need to be able to move our waves left and right and up and down. Not just stretch them this way and that way, but we actually need to move them this way and that way. And that's what this, in fact I'm going to highlight it for you, that's what these new values phi and b will allow us to do with those functions. So to explore this function right here, I want us to go and take a look at this uh, web URL, snipurl.com slash wbu underscore trig2. And then let's look at what effect does phi have on the graph and what effect does b have on the graph. So this is a Greek letter, sometimes called phi, but in a mathematical context, we almost always refer to it as the Greek letter phi. Um, don't let that confuse you. It's just the same thing, given a different name. But phi and b are the two we want to explore. So let's go look at a browser and see what effect that has using those same slider tools we've seen before. Now this particular model actually has all four parameters available as sliders on the graph. And we've already looked at a and omega and their effect on this graph. Just to refresh our memories, let me drag a back and forth and show you the effect, the different values of a. You can see the function off to the top left up here. And of course, as we move a, it stretches the curve up and down. On the other hand, omega will lengthen the curve. The higher the omega, the shorter the period, or higher frequency. Frequency just means the wave repeats itself faster. A higher frequency or shorter wavelength, shorter period. as omega gets larger. All right, but if I take everything back down as close as I can to one, let's look at the effect that, for example, phi. Let's start with phi and see what effect it has on the graph. If I drag it to the right, and by the way, I want you to keep in mind, there's a minus sign built in right here in this function. And the reason is so that if I move this to the right, what happens to the curve? It moves to the right. Get away, calendar. And if I move to the left, the curve moves to the left. So basically, phi tells you just how far to shift that starting point. Notice the points O and P on this picture. O is the basically the origin when you first start with the sine function, and P is the end or the period um, of that function, so how far it goes to do one wave. If I adjust omega, Right, p is going to be whatever 2 pi over omega would be. That's the period. Okay? And then 
omega tells you how far to the right you start this new curve. So uh, if, if omega is pi over 2, which happens to be, um, well, it's not quite that because omega is not 1. Hold on. I'll, I'll show you what I mean by this. All right, so omega is close to 1. Um, if phi is going to be whatever that x value of omega is, if a and omega are both 1. So if I go all the way out to, let's try to go to pi, which is about 3.1. Right, it's right there on pi. That's how far left and right you shift it. All right, so boom, you can move it left and right by changing phi. On the other hand, you can now move B, if I move it to the right, it goes up. I move it down, it goes left. So you can change where this wave is, basically put it anywhere on the graph that you want and give it any shape that you want. Okay, so what effect did phi have? It moved the function left and right. What effect did B have? It moved the function up and down. All right, horizontal shift, also called a phase shift. The B has a vertical shift of the wave. Now, in terms of amplitude period and phase shift and vertical shift, this is the information you need to remember and keep handy when you're using sinusoidal curves to fit data. The amplitude, that is how far above the middle or the axis that highest point of the wave is, and how far below is the amplitude. Period is 2 pi over omega. We've already covered these two. And now what we're introducing is the phase shift how far left and right, or how far to the right or left you move the wave is phi over omega. And the vertical shift, actually not horizontal, let's do vertical shift, is how far you move the wave up and down. It's just B. So this is, this is something to keep in mind here. Phase shift is phi over omega. Now, just to make sure we're clear, let's uh, use this function here and identify those four properties straight from the graph, or the equation of the curve. So, amplitude, you recall, is absolute value of a. In this case, that's absolute value of three, which is just three your period is 2 pi over omega which would be 2 pi over 2 in this case which is pi your phase shift how far left or right you move is phi over omega now keep in mind that the minus sign has to be there so that if this was a plus you would have to include the negative in phi. In this case, since there's a minus sign here, that right there is phi. Pi over omega, which is pi, so your phase shift is 1, which means we're going to move right, oh, you can't see that, we're going to move right one unit. That's what this tells us. And the vertical shift is 2, so we'd move up 2 units. Okay. But that's how we get those values for a given function. Actually, I can erase those two. All right, that was pi there. Okay, so that's the four important properties we need to be able to graph a full sinusoidal function. So the process of doing that in general is, is much the same as what we did with our simpler sinusoidal functions back in lecture um, 11. But now we have to consider the phase shift and the vertical shift as well. So we'd walk through these steps. First, we identify the amplitude and the period. Next, we determine the um, phase shift. Actually, I shouldn't say phase shift. I should say starting point. 
which uses both phase shift and vertical shift. Um, actually, I need to be careful here. Let's say we're going to use the starting point, which is one cycle of the graph. This is going to tell us where it starts on the x-axis. And this tells us where it ends on the x-axis. So this is the ending point. You remember on the demonstration we did on the browser, that's this would be like O, and this would be like P. Where it started and where it ended. Now we're going to take that interval, that is from the starting point to the ending point, and divide it into four sub-intervals. Each of the length is that whole length of the interval, which is the period divided by four. And then use those sub-intervals to find the five key points on the graph, right? So for a sine, you know, it goes up, down, like this. So fill in one cycle of the graph, or one wave and then extend the graph and if B is something other than zero then you do your vertical shift and just move the whole thing up and down Vertical shift alright let's look at an example alright so in this example we're gonna find the amplitude and phase shift for y equals 2 cosine of 4x plus 3 pi all plus 1 now, of course, the amplitude we get um, right away. Let me get my pen. Right, amplitude is absolute value of A. Period is um, 2 pi divided by omega. Phase shift is phi over omega, all from our previous um, point in the lecture. Here is A right there. That 4 right there is my omega, and this 3 pi right here is my phi. So my amplitude, absolute value of A, is 2. My period, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2 when you reduce it, is my period. And my phase shift, which is phi, 3 pi over omega, which is 4. So these numbers right here are going to be what I use to create my graph. Now remember that my starting point will be whatever my phase shift is, phi over omega. So 3 pi over 4 is where I'm going to start my cosine wave. And my ending point is going to be 3 pi over 4 plus my period, which is pi over 2. Um, Let's change that to 2 pi over 4 just by multiplying by 2 over 2. So I've got a common denominator. It's 5 pi over 4. So from 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 is one wave. So let's draw my axes. Let's go out to 2 pi and figure out where everything is. Now half of 2 pi is pi. Half of each of those is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 4, if I cut these in half, that's my pi over 4. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is right there. And 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. So here are my end, ending brackets. Now, I don't actually start there, remember, because it's a cosine function. So cosine functions go up the, start at the amplitude. So up here at 2, and down here at negative 2. It starts above here right there comes down to here when you reach the halfway point of the intervals back up here and then back down you see that cosine wave starts up here goes down to the lowest point of it and then comes back up so my four points are 3 pi over 4 this point right here this point right here this point right here that gives me all the places I need to be able to figure out the, the wave. Now, I did not draw it solid on purpose. Uh, on purpose, I did that um, so because that's not the actual wave. There is one last thing to consider, and that's this plus one up here at the top. That's the vertical shift. The vertical shift will move everything up one unit. That's what plus one does. So the wave is actually not start here. It starts one higher. 
goes down two, and then goes down two more to here, and then back up two here, that your cosine wave does this. And it's going to repeat that over and over. So at each of these four points, it's doing. Let's see if I can get this to go down. Like this. And then. I'm right there. There's my cosine wave. It just repeats itself over and over again. All right. That is a horrible drawing. I wish I could have done better than that. Not quite that easy with my pen. But just keep in mind, there are several pieces at work here. But the main thing you need to know is the amplitude, the period, that is how far the distance is that it, sorry, it repeats itself, which is that distance pi over 2. You've got your phase shift, which is how far over we've shifted to start the wave. Then you've got your vertical shift, which is right here. All those pieces work together to help you find where that wave is going to be located. In this last example, I'm going to take us over to another one of our little slider tools or GeoGebra tool, um, a graphing tool that allows us to manipulate our sliders like before where we can see the effect of the sliders of different parameters on the sinusoidal graph but what I've done this time is I've actually plotted a series of points that correspond with some actual real-world data this is from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration in the United States these are average monthly temperatures for January February March all the way through December at a given geographical location. I can't remember where I pulled this data from, but it was from the NOAA website. So I'm going to jump over to this link, snipurl.com slash wbu underscore trig3, and try to fit a sinusoidal curve to this data by manipulating all four parameters, amplitude, phase, shift, um, the period, and the vertical shift, and then come back here and write down what I came up with. In this particular example, you have a set of data that's been plotted onto the graph. So each point represents a temperature and a month. So the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is the month of the year, 1 being January, 12 being December. And then we've plotted another year of data following that, assuming that it follows the same periodic pattern. What's graphed down here below is a typical sine wave. Uh, of course, the vertical axis represents temperature, so you'll notice that a typical sine wave would only extend and go a length of 2 pi and a height of 1. What we want to do is transform this curve to match this data as best we can. Now remember, we have the freedom then to adjust various parameters within this model. We can adjust A, meaning we can make the wave taller. We can adjust phi, which has an effect on the period, how long it takes to repeat. So as you begin to manipulate some of these sliders, you begin to see that what we want to be able to do is to adjust the length of the wave as well as its horizontal location, that's what phase shift allows us to do, and its vertical height to match the data. Right? In fact, what we would really like to do, let's move the vertical shift so that the as best we can, the wave fits right in the middle of the data. We're gonna adjust our amplitude next. I'm going to make it so that the highest matches the highest point of data we've got and the lowest matches the lowest point as close as possible just by dragging that left and right. And then finally we can use our phase shift and our period length to get the data to match as closely as possible. little bit of gaps here if we what we would really like for the 
the omega value is so that the same point occurs at the same place on the graph twice in a row. So I want this thing to be a little bit wider, just a hair wider. problem is I'm using a stylus instead of a mouse so it's a little bit harder to just let go wherever I want it to stop all right I'm gonna say that's a good guess right now so what I've got is 21.9 0 0.52 2.15 and 51.6 for my values now from our um, model we had y is equal to a sine of omega t plus phi all plus b and using the data that we collected by modeling that function in GeoGebra we have a is 21.9 times the sine of omega t 0 0.52 t I'm going to run out of space right here let's go down below y is equal to 21.9 sine of 0 0.52 t plus 2.15 plus 51.6 which is now a model equation that we could use to predict the temperature based on this data.